Hey, what's up? Today I have for you the Viper B by Ultra. Um, and before I get into the review, I'm just gonna kind of get on my soapbox and vent for just a, a quick minute or two here. Um, and I, I brought this up during the Viper C review and I'm gonna reiterate here. Um, Ultra's coming out with um, a bunch of different variations of their bags, but they're just adding a letter to the end. So you've got the Viper B, you've got a Viper C, they come out with a Viper R, they've got X's out there for their bags. They're doing it with the Viper line, the Widow, the Psycho line. Uh, I don't know if they're gonna come out, but I think the Vapor as well has some of those. Um, I don't know if they're gonna come out with different butter ones or not yet. Um, but but I feel like it's a, it's a lazy way of doing things. Um, just because, so this is a regular Viper, right? This is what we all know as a Viper. This is the B, and they look identical. Just look, at first glance, it looks like the same bag. The problem is, there's nothing Viper about this bag. It's, it's different materials, it plays different. Um, the only thing, the only way you can identify it is right here, it has a scribbled B here, and then down here it says Viper B on it. So it just, whenever you see, you know, when I see this, I really think Viper, but then you gotta stop and look which model is it because they're all a little differently. And I don't know why they didn't come out with a different name um, because Ultra does a great job with their logos. You know, the, the Viper logo is very simple, very clean, but it's so identifiable and it, I love it. You know, same with the Widow, great logo. Um, why they didn't take their, their graphics design team and say, okay, you know what, we're coming out with a new bag. I want you to come out with a logo that fits this simple, clean style, but let's give it something different. And you want to stick with the snake name, maybe you call it the Anaconda, you know, or the Boa Constrictor, or I don't know. There's plenty of different snake names you could have used. I just think they could have got more creative and, and, and instead they, cho they chose the easy way and they've really muddied the water with all these different letters that you just, you see a Viper now and you don't know which Viper it is. And, and I, I hate that. So anyway, I'm getting off my soapbox. Let's get into the review here. Um, the bag itself, um, it's the slow side, uh, plays a speed of five. It's actually the exact same slow side as the butter. So if you're familiar with this bag um, and you like this, this slow side, that's exactly what's on here. Um, like I said, a slow side of a five. Um, I, as this bag broke in, it, it's kind of slowed down a touch for maybe even closer to a four and a half. Um, but right around that four and a half, five range, I would say. Um, humid conditions, it will slow down, but not much. Um, so if you like playing that uh, with like a surefire type material, but you play in a humid area, this may be a great, great alternative because it's gonna slow down a tick, but not come to a stop like that surefire does. Uh, fast side, you would think being a Viper, it would have the Viper fast side. It does not. Now this fast side and the fast side of the Viper are very close. This is actually has the fast side of the Vapor bag, if you're familiar with that uh, Ultra's Vapor. Um, it's, it's a, it's plays identical to the Viper. Um, it's a nine speed, super hole friendly, um, plays great. I, I don't know why they chose the Vapor over the Viper fast side for this bag, um, but the only difference is to me this Vapor fast side material is a little more, um, a little more fragile. And what I mean is it's more prone to snags, pulls, not gonna affect the playability, but cosmetically it's, it, it, it'll look different. Um, but anyway, it's it's a super fast bag. It's gonna push through any any blockers, bully bags out of the way. Um, it's gonna, you know, if you're playing in slower conditions, it, it's still gonna flap the board. It's a great fast side material. Um, and I think by pairing these two together, they've created a super versatile bag. Um, in fact, maybe the most versatile bag that Ultra has in their lineup right now. Um, and it's, it really, it's, fits my play style a lot better because I like to have a little bit of a range between the slow and the fast side material because I want to be able to use both sides in different situations during a game and this really does fit that as well. It's also kind of that um, hybrid style bag I like to call because it fits so many different play styles. You know, if you if you like to play the the fast game, the fast bags, you just slide in the hole every time. This slow side is still fast enough. You can slide in the hole, um, and if there's something in the way, you flip it over the fast side, and you can push through. Like I said, push through any bag, collect your bag, bully their, you put it back out of the way. Um, you can definitely do that with this material and in this bag. Um, and if you're one that wants to play a little bit dirtier game, this slow side is slow enough. You can still throw a blocker out there and block and then work around it and then collect it at the end with this fast side. Again, you're, you'll be able to collect it, no problem. Um, the one thing I will say, a trade off you get, is by going to a touch slower side, um, as opposed to this Viper, which it has the seven slow side, but it has those dots to slow it down, so the fabric's still pretty fast. This bag did, did have a tendency to kind of want to hang on the lip of the hole. You know, it, it's, it's forgiving in the sense that if you're offline a touch and you miss, you, you don't hit the hole perfectly, it's, it's going to grab, spin around. Um, occasionally it would fell in and melted right in beautifully. A lot of times it would kind of spin and set there. 
Um, and, and what I was struggling with um, was that I wasn't very aggressive at going after it. So a lot of times I would just throw my next few bags normally thinking they would just hit and, and pull it in. And they kept hitting the bag, but it never actually pulled it in. So it, it's going to catch. It's going to be forgiving enough to catch and hang on the hole. But when it does that, you've got to be a little more aggressive, either with an airmail drag to drag it in um, or go after a little more to try to clip more of that bag and intentionally, you know, intentionally clip it to bring it in. Um, the danger in that as well is when you're going after it to try to clip it a little more aggressively, there's a chance that you could bunch up and end up with two or three bags, bunch up on the side of the hole, clog the hole up, which will reduce your scoring. Um, again, I don't want to knock it because that's that's the, that's what happens when you slow down and slow side material is you're going to lose some of that hole friendliness because it's slower because it's stickier, which means it's going to it's going to catch in the hole. So, not a knock on the bag. Just be aware that it's it's not going to play like this Viper does. It's not going to melt in the hole like this does. It's going to stick up a little more, and you got to be a little more aggressive. As I played with it for a while, after about an hour or so of breaking in and started doing the videos, I really started getting a, a feel for it. Um, and once I knew how to do it, I didn't have an issue. Um, so it's it's definitely a bag that's going to it's going to go in the hole more times than not. Super forgiving. Um, it does have a slight kick to it, but not much at all. So if you're not a fat a flat bag thrower, um, you're still going to have success with this bag. You don't really have to change your style much. Um, as far as the the maneuverability of the bag, um, I had no problem cutting this bag. You can cut left to right, right to left. I'm going to do it. Um, you can roll and flop this bag. I've seen it done. Can I? Eh, not very well. Um, I, I, I was able to roll it a few times on there. Um, I think I might get a video once or twice of me rolling the bag, but it, it, it was it was something that, that I struggled to do consistently. Um, so this is definitely not a bag that I would play a roll style game with. There are so many other bags out there that are better for that that I would choose. I mean, in fact, they're coming out with a um, they've got a Widow R, they come out with a Viper R, which are carpeted bags, which are probably a better bag for rolling if that's what you're what you like i haven't got my hands on those yet. in fact the viper r's aren't, aren't even released yet but when they do come out and i get my get myself a set we'll, we'll we'll see how that plays but again i'm i'm at best an average rollback thrower um i don't even know if i'd come myself i'm probably below average so it's you know if you're if you can throw a roll bag pretty consistently you're probably gonna have success with this but i don't think that's the strength of this bag like i said this is more of a bag where you're gonna throw a blocker out there if you like to play dirty throw a blocker you're gonna cut around it or air mail it, air mail it, and then you're gonna flip it over and push and collect at the end. That's really what this bag's designed to do. Um, that's where that's where it'll excel. Or like I said, if you just want to throw them all in the, in, in the hole every time, no problem. Um, being so versatile, and I, I may have mentioned it, but being versatile, it's also a great blind draw bag because no matter what opponent you get, this is a bag that'll fit their playing style. So that you both, even if you play different style games, this is a bag that you can you can do well with. Um, and, and I think you mix this Viper B with the regular Viper and the Widow and these with these three bags. Um, you, you throw these in your backpack and you can handle pretty much any condition, board condition, play stock, and whatever you want with these three bags. I think this Viper B really does complete Ultra's lineup. Um, so if you are a Surefire thrower, Deadhead thrower, Typhoon, Costello, if you throw those type of bags, this is a bag that you're going to love. Um, if you enjoy the butter, if you if you love from the butter, but you don't like the satin material fast side, which I'm not a fan of, to me this is a better version of this. This is a better butter bag. Um, maybe this should have been called the Butter B, not the Viper B. Um, but yeah, it, it's a to me it's a better version of this bag, more of a traditional fast side material than what this has. So if you like the butter, you're gonna love this bag. Um, I think it's a bag that most everybody should have in their lineup. Um, something similar to this. As far as availability, Ultra has been doing a great job um, this year about keeping bags in stock. For the most part, um, I, in fact, as of the recording of this video, they still had Viper Bees in stock on their website to go order. Um, Price-wise, I think I should have paid more attention to this. I think they run about $150 a set regularly, which is at the upper end of the price of bags. Um, but when they do release this and as they run sales, you can get them more like $95 to $100 a set. Um, which if you can find a set of Viper Bees that $95 price range for a set, by all means, grab them. You'll, you'll love them. You're going to be happy with them. Um, I, I highly recommend these bags. I've enjoyed throwing them as I've thrown them. I, I'm going to look forward to throwing them more because I think as they break in, they'll become more hole friendlier than what they are. Um, and so, yeah, they're, they're a solid bag, great bag. It's something I will keep in my rotation in my backpack for a while. Um, and I can see myself throwing quite often because I really did enjoy throwing these for this video. So, yeah. Definitely get yourself a Viper Bees if you see them out there. Um, you won't be disappointed.
Thanks for watching, guys.